My name is Matt, I'm the Viking Biker. My name's Karina, I'm Freebird Moto. And together we're starting a series called Coffee Shop Talks. Boom! <laughs> Welcome to Coffee Shop Talks, and today our guest is Biker Jen. Hi. <laughs> we thought we'd kick off with talking about all the yeah all the yeah. I'm a bit I'm a bit injured. And yeah, basically I've I've taken up trials bike riding, and uh, yesterday was my second time since about November. Um, oh, so you're new to it? Well, no. I was, like... I, I was riding for about six months last year, but then I kind of stopped in November, haven't been back for various reasons, and this has been like my second time. Oh, okay. So I feel like a brand new, brand new person. <laughs> and so last weekend I had a pretty good fall. Um, and then <laughs> yesterday I had the most spectacular fall. I cannot wait to share the photo. <laughs> so basically... Somehow, I, I kind of tank slapped a, a trials bike. <laughs> it was literally full lock one way, full lock the other way. And it's, it all happens in slow motion. It's, it's weird. It's hard to describe. So I thought I broke my finger. Um, I don't think I have, as I've been showing you. <laughs> but now you've told me about your high pain threshold. It's freaking me out that it is broken and you're just waggling it, it all the time. It might be. It may be. We'll see. I, I want to go ride it today. So I don't... I can't you're going to you know after you've ridden today, like... You're just going to ignore it. it like, it's not broken. I'm <laughs> it was actually hurting on the way here. Like, extended it to get the clutch because my clutch on the bike is really quite stiff. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does hurt but yeah it, it may be broken or it may not we'll find out <laughs> what way. caused the crash do you remember sorry this so so off. basically there's a bit of a hill like a tiny little like a little speed bump of a hill and it, if you give it a bit when you're uh, at the top of the hill you can do a really good like oh, so it's the front <laughs> end comes up and then usually you can jump the back end oh as yeah well. oh, okay so i was kind of doing it on okay. purpose but i don't know oh. what i did and i kind of I don't know, I kind of gave it a bit much or something. I just mistimed it. And I just ended up just face planting. And then, yeah, my, my boots were like up here. There's an amazing photo that is, is coming. I really want to see that. It is so good. You must so. be quite flexy then. I didn't realise I was, but I think so. <laughs> I don't think my feet would come over like that. I think I'd just be like a board. Yeah. I think you did the work on the floor. So Matt and I are quite open about our mental health. <laughs> uh, we don't call I don't like to say issues I just mm. think that mental health is <laughs> just, mental just health yeah it's physical health mental health mm. so we both wanted to include a bit of C the CBT stuff yeah in your training mm -hmm. and also whether or not you think since you've been doing the training if that's linked to how you think and feel on the bike as well um yeah, so currently I'm a training CBT therapist, so that's cognitive behavioural therapy. Yes, yeah, so um, you're compulsive. No, no, it's not basic training. Compulsive basic training, yeah. Basic training. yeah that's, that's how it. I read it. When <laughs> yeah, I read it. Yeah, <laughs> Why are you asking about a CBT? Yeah, so yeah, I'm currently a trainee, so I'm, I'm um, currently practising with, with clients. It's something that I've done for a few years already, but now I'm doing the, the training for like high intensity work, so... Um, yeah, I I love it, and uh, I just think that, like we were saying before, it's just quite simple, mm. but it's kind of educating people, I think, and just telling them, you know, you need to do this, and and then you'll feel better. And actually, where where I work with my clients, you know, they they do these changes, and then they make, you know, they feel better. It's just it's so nice. It's just the nicest feeling ever. I love it. Seeing that transformation. Mm -hmm. If you could explain to people what CBT is in a nutshell. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, no if it, yeah, in ten words or less. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, CBT in a nutshell is essentially there is a link between your, your thoughts, your feelings, like the way that you feel, what you do, your behaviours and the, the physical sensations um, that you feel in your body. So 
essentially it's changing your thoughts so that you are um, you don't feel kind of bad in the other kind of aspects mm. there's lots of different things in CBT like lots of practical skills that you can mm. learn that really help you so one of the things is kind of challenging your own thoughts mm. because thoughts happen and they might be really negative or they might be really anxious you know and, and by sitting there and thinking about things you can make yourself physically yeah. feel so bad and, and it can change your behaviour and things like that so actually just sitting there and thinking um, if you had a, a, an automatic thought that's like, oh, that person doesn't like me, sitting there and thinking, well, what evidence do I have? You yeah. know, what would my friend say about this? Yeah. All of those kind of things. Like, you're then able to, to deal with that and it doesn't spiral yeah. from there. Um, and that's what I think is, is just so simple about CBT. Um, something we spoke about as well is, mm. is um, when somebody gets depressed, they tend to stop doing the things that they like to do, yeah. and they just um, they just do the things that they have to do. So you'll find that they just go to work, or they it's just survival mode, aren't you, yeah, really? that's exactly it. So there's no pleasure at all. You, you just take all of that out of your yeah, life. Yeah. yeah, and and one of the big things that, that all of us have got in common is is riding bikes. So someone who's feeling a bit depressed may stop riding. Mm. Um, and actually it's really important to make time for yourself yeah. um, to, to go and ride and to do things that you really enjoy doing, whatever that might be. I, I'm a massive believer in self care. Yeah. So so you and that's the have, difference, isn't it? Self care. We yeah. don't call it that. And mm. and would you treat yourself uh, it, like a, a child in the way that you treat yourself? Or your best you, friend? Yeah. Or, you would never yeah. do that. You know, you would make time for them, and you would do something you know, nice. Do, for yeah, them. exactly. <laughs> and and it can be as simple as just having a bath, or just going for a ride, or just mm. doing your nails, or it could be literally anything. Um, but it just makes you feel better and one of my clients said to me the other, t- the other day about having like a 10 minute holiday every day mm. so imagine just having 10 minutes for yourself every day just, yeah. <laughs> yeah and I just I really like that kind of self care I don't think it's being selfish I think the 10 minutes out of a whole day when you put it in context there's nothing yeah. Yeah, yeah. out of the however many minutes there are in a day 10 minutes is, is nothing so it's just these really simple things um and I never saw myself becoming a CBT mm-hmm. therapist, but because it is so simple and because I can see massive change from when somebody starts therapy to when they end therapy and they've got all these new skills and they feel better, like, that's why I go to work. I, I'm not, I work for the NHS. I'm not in it for the money. <laughs> I'm in it for the, because I want to help someone. Think of your mental health or you like a battery because work and, and stress and everything that you've got it's going on, paying the bill, yeah, it just drains your battery what are you doing to recharge your battery and most people are like what um <laughs> like but if, if i list the things that i do you know I, I like to make time for myself and I, I like to go out with my friends as much as possible and i i like to draw and i like to do this and that and those are the things that make me feel good and and that recharges my battery so that i'm then you know work is a massive part of what we do and as long as you're enjoying everything outside of work i think yeah, you make yourself a good happy. balance. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. So before we wrap up, Karina is going to give you a bit more of an in-depth chat, mm-hmm. and then Matt's going to do all the kind of the more bikey tech stuff. He wants to go and have a look look around that bike. Mm-hmm. So no problem. <laughs> so that's the end of this part. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I recently decided, fuck it, I'm just going to see if I can clutch wheelie. Sure, I think the fuck it bit is. So important. Yeah, it is. <laughs> if you just think, fuck it. Oh, fuck it, just do it. I'll yeah. Give it a go. Although on this occasion it didn't quite oh, work. Well. <laughs> but, so I just thought, I'm going to try and clutch wheelie. I've never clutched wheelie. <laughs> and I decided to do it on a trials bike standing up. Great idea. So, yeah, I did it and I just literally just dumped it. And you can see it's on YouTube. I just threw the bike. This crash. No, 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 I crash all the time. Oh, I crash okay. all the time. It's not, not this one. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I just kind of. Um, ever since then I'm now stuck in my head and I cannot do it and oh. even when the guys are saying like you literally just let the clutch out really really slowly and the way that I did it I just dumped it right. and I know what I did and I know how I did it wrong I just I cannot bring myself to, to actually get past that no point. I can't yeah. do it I get stuck in my head a lot like with a lot of different things but I just have to kind of walk away and a lot of the time it's just a fuck it you know let's have a go and that's usually when I crash <laughs> <laughs> so 
Cool. And you said a little bit in the joint interview that Matt and I are obviously quite open about mental health. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about that period of time after that accident? Yeah, so I, it was at a time where um, I had just split up with my ex-partner of like eight years, nine years, something like that. Um, so I came out of a really long time, mm. term relationship. Um, and then I had crashed and obviously I couldn't go to work. So I was off for... I don't know, two, two, three months, something like that. Mm. And I was on my own because my mum at the time was um, training to be a midwife. So I had to move back in with her. She was working night shifts and I was mm. awake during the day. Oh, so I yeah. literally never saw anyone. It was just like, I was on my own all of the time. I was feeling really shit. I wasn't sleeping properly. I was in a lot of pain. Um, obviously I was in pain after it happened, not during. <laughs> like, um, so yeah, um, I, I was really, really low. And that's one of the type, like my mental health, I think that it has been quite good throughout my life. I've been quite lucky. Um, but that was one time that I can identify where I did really, I was mm. really quite low. Um, I wasn't seeing anyone, I wasn't seeing my friends, I wasn't going to work. Um, I lived quite far away from everyone that I knew and then, I, you know, I'd also just split up with my partner. So it's that kind of that getting used to, yeah, getting mm. used to being on your own again, um, which is quite a big thing. So yeah, I felt really low at that time. And this was way before I knew anything about mental health. Yeah. But have you ever heard of the worry tree a little bit i love that i i i adopt that every day so it's like right you've got a problem is there anything you can do about it yes okay do it no right. okay fuck it yeah basically that's not the NHS the point, version yeah. <laughs> <laughs> basically the summary, I love that, that. that's the way that, that i kind of deal with things you know can i do deal with it mm. okay well problem solve and do it like mm. make yourself a plan and do it or no you have to learn to let it go mm. and you, it, there is it's really hard to let things go especially with anxieties it's yeah, so it's hard telling you you should be worrying about it yeah. just think about it a little bit more you'll figure it out yeah and because you are not... you're triggering something in your brain which is saying you know I'm threatened I need to, be scared, scared, I need to yeah. be scared of something yeah. um, so it's really hard to go against the physical things that you're feeling but actually sometimes you have to mm. you know and if it's going to really make you feel uncomfortable and horrible you need to let it go you know mm. Deal with it or fuck it. Deal yeah. with it or fuck it. Either, either way. On. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I feel like I've just sat in on the couch with Jen. <laughs> I should be charging. I should be you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not gonna have a ride. It's gonna be a good day. I know. Yeah. I think there's a, a massive thing in, you know, not not even CBT, but just positive, be, mm. be positive thinking. If you think it's a lovely day, I'm gonna go for a ride. You're gonna be feeling happy. You're gonna be feeling Check excited. A bit. Yeah. And that's the way that I I try and. Live my life is just to think you know about the good things mm -hmm. it's really easy to highlight the negative things yeah you know but actually if you think about all of the great things like even if you're not going out on the bike I have a motorbike I can go out on the motorbike you know make plans and things like that you know I can go out if I want to there's a lot of people who can't afford them or, yeah. or can't yeah. ride them think about you know people who are disabled and are not able to afford to get their bike adapted and things like that we're, we're very lucky to mm. have been in accidents and to still be able to yeah, ride our bikes absolutely. Yeah. that's the way I, I kind of live my life so yeah. what's the biggest secret you've ever kept from your parents um <laughs> oh I don't know my mum has found everything oh do you know I've got I've got um two tattoos on my bum um, so my mum now knows about them, but she didn't. Um, and when I was, um, I got my first tattoo somehow when I was 15, um, cause I obviously looked a lot older and, uh, that was a secret and she didn't find out for a good, like, oh, I don't know, six weeks or something after I got it. And then one day it was like on my hip and one day I kind of stretched and she saw it. Um, and she didn't speak to me for three weeks. And I was 15 and she cooked all of my dinner. <laughs> so that was an issue. No, this is the tentative bit, but I cannot let you leave without us touching on this because this yeah. is kind of what made me sort of reach out to you on social media in the first place. Yeah. You call them Insta hoes. I do, I do. Um, yeah. I just, I don't know, I, I seem to... Um, have a bit of a reputation for talking about them but I think it's because, it, because you do you yeah talk I do about what people won't talk about yeah and it just it just annoys me um I just so a typical insta ho as, yeah, I, let's give us a as I would call them are the kind of girls that will have a helmet on but have like just a bra on or no boobs like no nothing at all no boobs <laughs> nothing at all but have their boobs like that like 
just with a helmet like just half naked and they're only doing it for the gram or they're doing it to get follows and get likes and I just there's so many female bikers mm. that I really respect yeah. and I, I look on their Instagram and their YouTube and things like that because I want to see them doing amazing things I, I think it's hard enough to be a female biker in a man's world because it is we, 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 can't get we are the that. minority yeah. we are um, I think it's hard enough without people doing that mm. so I get told a lot of the time that I get sent free stuff because I've got tits and that gets on my nerves a lot and it's like well actually can can we look can we take my gender and my tits out of this and can we have a look at what I do I ride all year round I ride in different disciplines I I you know I I vlog and I blog and I I I do loads it's your of things. Yeah, yeah. I, it's what I do every day. I just share what I, what I do. So that dismisses all of that the second that yeah. someone says, oh, "Of course you got." Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I can wheelie. I can get my knee done. I can flat track. I can do. You know, give me a bike and I'll have a go. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But what yeah. I'm kind of worried about, I, I guess, is that person that we look at in that square. Mm -hmm. but they look perfect. I'm like, how do you look like that getting off your bike? Number yeah. one, I need to know that. They don't. But yeah. <laughs> that's like the doesn't. secret. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. The reason I think I have an issue with it is that you are putting yourself out there as a female wanting attention, so whip the boobs out. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think that wouldn't it... That's gone <laughs> off. <laughs> wouldn't it just be nicer for you to go and learn something or go out on a ride and go and be the best person that you can be instead of resorting to the easy way, which is getting your boobs mm -hmm. out, really? But then I, on the other hand, I'm you just like, just let them live, yeah, whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, if if you want to do that, you're doing a completely different thing to me. You're no yeah. competition to me because we're on two different classes. Yeah. 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 I could literally carry on talking to you about that forever. Yeah, forever. Yeah. The CBT stuff and this, I could nat on. And if there was like beer involved, it would go uh, forever. Cider. Yeah. Cider, really? You're a cider girl. Oh, cider you've learned one person. other thing about yeah. bike again. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's all right. Thanks for having me. You're free to go. Lovely. Cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. Jazz on everything. Yeah. <laughs> jazz, yeah. <laughs> That'd be a hajazzle then. Yeah. Jazz isn't actually. Yeah, it's quite a specific area. <laughs> right. Go on then. Talk some bollocks. Okay. Talk some bollocks. Um, so. All right. Pro face on. Let's <laughs> see. Um, so, somewhat shot. It's not the bike, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. No, it's something over there. Okay, for you. <laughs> oh, fucking hell, there's some drunk people. Jesus. Sunday people. Bike. Oh my god, please don't come Yeah, don't any of the bikes, because I will. He's walking down the street with a pint glass. And his head is literally at 90 degrees to his shoulder. <laughs> That's normal. <laughs> it's normal, I'm not drunk. Okay, for you. Okay. Oh, that was. Therapist to have a chat with him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's the first thing you'd do if you woke up one day and you were the opposite sex? Oh, do the helicopter. <laughs> 100%. Would you not? Oh, maybe. Well, a bird, bird, bird. The birds are a bird, bird, bird. Well, a bird is a bird, bird, bird. The birds are a bird, bird, bird. The birds are a bird, bird, bird.